And the Lord God commanded him, You may eat freely from every tree of the garden, but you must not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. For in the day that you eat of it, you will surely die. Genesis 2.16 Greetings mortals, and welcome back to the channel. I'm your host Simon, as always, and this is the Library of Gnosis. When Adam and Eve ate the fruit from the tree of knowledge of good and evil, they realized that they were naked and clothed themselves. This really speaks to a primal urge we humans have to clothe ourselves. Animals don't wear clothes because they don't feel shame about being naked. The fall from grace in the Garden of Eden, to me, seems to symbolize human self-consciousness. Because animals are practical beings, they live in the present moment and do not worry about the past or the future. This seems to have been the form of intelligence Adam and Eve had in the garden, an animal consciousness that is at peace with the world, acting as one within it, without self-reflection. To me, animals seem to have this blissful state a flow with the world. They have neither regrets nor worries. They just exist in the present moment fully. They do not have a concept of good or evil and act mostly from a place of instinct and feeling. The knowledge of good and evil, a consciousness that can contemplate such an esoteric concept as morality, Alan Watts once mentioned that Walt Whitman envied animals, for they do not lie awake at night weeping for their sins. The fall from grace can be seen as the destruction of our innocence as animals, as, at least to me, all of nature follows the way, or Tao as it is said in the East. Only humans to me seem like they are not in harmony with the rest of nature. The fall from grace can also be seen as humanity growing up to become responsible for itself, instead of being pampered pets in a garden. The fall from grace also meant that we became self-conscious, on a level that meant that we could become afraid of future danger. No other animal on earth has this peculiar function, or maybe I should call it obsession with the future. This sense of future danger also meant that we could be threatened by future punishment, which in turn meant that we could be enslaved. You can't scream at an animal to produce more milk, but with humans you can enslave them by threatening them with punishment in the future if they do not obey the authorities. So, in short, this fall from grace was a double-edged sword, but the knowledge of the serpent and the wisdom it represents must mean it was a needed evolution in our consciousness. It also gave us worry about the future, so you can thank the gods for anxiety, I guess. One could think perhaps it was some sort of DNA upgrade, performed perhaps by the being we call Enki. Could be many things. But I think we can get a lot from analyzing the symbolic meaning of the fall. Yahweh or Zeus is the god of order, and perhaps the so-called fall created disorder in the universe, which could be the reason he was against it. Just like our trickster Prometheus, who stole fire from Olympus for humanity, Zeus did not like this one either. A trickster creates chaos to re-establish a novel order in the form of a new paradigm. It's quite the alchemical process when you think about it. Yahweh told us that we will die if we eat the fruit, and in a sense he was right. You need to die to be reborn. How very biblical. I can't help but think of humans in the Garden of Eden as pampered pets, but some force, in this case the influence of the serpent, 
wanted us to be more than just pets, and instead to be children, children of the Anunnaki, inheritors of earth and children of the great sun. Perhaps why the Anunnaki are no longer around on earth is that they want us to come up and meet them as equals instead of master and servant. Now, this is a topic that can be approached from many different sides. I'm sure I will continue to contemplate it way past this video. Thank you for watching, mortals. Hit me up on Patreon if you want to support my work. And a big thank you to all of you who've donated. It's unfortunate that we are stuck in this economic trap we call fiat currency. I'll see you next one, mortals.